There are two huge stories, huge factors that are going to affect the price of gold and by default silver and probably silver to a greater degree that are unfolding in the world right now. We need to put our thinking caps on. I know you're smart. I know the people that watch my videos, a little higher intellectual horsepower than the average bear per se, but we can grasp this. I will try to make it as simple as possible for you, explain what's going on in the world geopolitically, and then here at home, a complete paradigm shift that I think is about to occur as to how the market looks at precious metals. I'll be curious to hear what you think. You've got a good brain between your ears as well. Let me know your thoughts. Let's dive into all of this right now. First, we're going to talk about geopolitics. So while you're at the club this weekend, the country club, you can mention to one of your cohorts that there's a lot going on in the world geopolitically. You heard it from a guy in his basement in St. Louis. Let's keep this simple. The world is splitting, right? We've covered that ad nauseum. But further evidence was given to that point this week when President Xi from China went to Saudi Arabia. And it wasn't just any old visit. If you look into this, and I encourage you to do that, they rolled out the red carpet on top of the red carpet for President Xi from China. They had fighter jets fly over with the Chinese flag color smoke trails. I mean, they had horses, cavalry leading him his limousine into the royal palace. It was a total love fest way different than what they did when President Joe Biden from the United States of America went over there about eight weeks ago to beg them to stop uh, cutting oil production so that the Democrats could do well in the midterm elections. This visit from China to Saudi Arabia was an utter love fest. Now, the big thing that came out of it were like 25 or 30 major agreements that were signed, energy agreements, technology agreements, major construction projects. The world is splitting. And don't forget, you know, the Chinese and the Saudis becoming good buddies. Well, the Chinese are good buddies with the Russians. The Chinese are good buddies with the India. I mean, you know, that's the other side of the world. The world is splitting. Now, the bombshell this week from a geopolitical perspective, the price caps, we've covered that $60 price cap. The United States is trying to control the oil market, the world oil market. That's like a parent trying to control a rebellious 18-year-old daughter, right? It usually doesn't work out too well. Zoltan Pulsar from Credit Suisse, right? And this guy's actually very well respected, put out a bombshell article that said, if Putin from Russia started to accept gold for oil, gold could go to $3,600 per ounce. And if there's an uncomfortable lull during your dinner at the country club, you can always throw in the point that the country of Ghana announced that they will be working on a method for buying oil with what? With gold. Do you see a trend occurring here? Now let's put the geopolitical situation to the side. And we're going to go to factor number two and it's a big one that could also provide solid support, rocket fuel, if you will, for the price of silver and gold. But first, my favorite part of the video, when I get to tell you, yes, you, you, thank you for deciding to join me right now here in Ron's basement from wherever in the world you are. Look, we know it's tough investing in the precious metals, investing in the mining stocks, Trying to figure out what's really going on in the world. We're kind of a minority of people. So when you come here and you join me, it's me and you together, but we're part of a little bigger group of people who are digging around. You got a friend for life. I'll put out a video every day. I'll always do my best for you, and I appreciate your support. If you want to subscribe, get some value from this, you can do that right here. Turn on the little ring -a -ling -ding -a -ling bell. Now let's get back to the video and talk about this next factor that I think could be explosive for gold and silver. 
Are you noticing a new narrative developing in the market? Every time I turn around, I'm hearing Jamie Dimon or this, you know, supposed guru saying that 2023 is going to be very, very tough for the U.S. economy. I'm also hearing that inflation might be getting a little better, but we're not seeing significant improvements in inflation. Now, we'll get numbers next week. That will be very interesting regarding inflation. But I sense we are at a paradigm shift, a pivot, whatever you want to call it, in terms of how the market is looking at inflation and the economy and how it's looking at gold and silver. Because it's a big, big deal to realize the fact that gold and silver sniff out the future. They don't look just at what's going on right now. They look out six months to a year, to a year and a half in the future. Now, over the last year, 2022, high inflation didn't really help the price of gold because everyone thought that meant that the Fed would be more and more and more hawkish, which they were. But right now we're at this pivot point, right? Where the market's saying, hey, we still have high inflation, but the economy and everybody saying it is gonna slow down in 2023. We're gonna have a recession, but we're still gonna have that inflation. So how's the Fed gonna fight that inflation if the economy is crashing, basically? And they're wondering, what are we going to do? If the market's going to go down, if asset prices are going to go down, but we're still going to have inflation, and we're going to have a Fed that's going to be neutered in terms of their ability to fight that inflation because they're going to have an economy that's going down, down, down. It looks very promising for gold and silver. I want to read something to you from David Erfley. He writes a newsletter called The Junior Miner Junkie, but I think he summed it up very well. Let me read that for you right now. The current macro climate resembles the ones that preceded both the 1973-74 stagflationary recession and the early 2000s tech bust. While creating a boom, a boom in precious metals each time. With investors sensing a likely similar macro backdrop unfolding, Gold is sniffing out the fact that it's only a matter of time before the Fed's slower tightening turns into outright cuts. And I want to add a little more sugar on top. I don't know how you see this, but the way I look at it right now, inflation has almost ironically been our enemy during 2022 for precious metals. Because again, that gave the Fed this impetus to be tight with monetary policy. Now we're sitting at a point where... A, if inflation does go down, that would mean that the market may perceive the Fed's winning their fight on inflation and they could loosen up. Or B, if inflation does stay high, the market's going to look at that and say, the Fed is screwed, they're losing their fight on inflation, and the economy is going to crash. This is not a good situation. Option A and option B both look very good for the price of the precious metals. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's always an option C that we're not thinking of, and I don't have a crystal ball, just sharing my opinions with you. But when I look at what's happening with the U.S. economy and the big picture geopolitical situation, both of which really feel positive for the price of precious metals, I'll be an optimist as we move into 2023 that we could have an outstanding year for the price of gold and the price of silver. One thing for sure, we're going to find out, and I'll be here for you every day. I'll look forward to seeing you. Yes, you. Yes, we're friends. I'll see you next time.